when we're trying to think about how an entire economy functions, it seems like an incredibly daunting task. I mean, how do we come to understand how, in the case of Australia, for example, over 8 million households decide to buy various products and sell uh, resources that they have available to over 2 million businesses which produce a vast array of different types of goods and services. Both the households and the firms take advantage of at least 33 major banks in Australia and a small army of other kinds of financial institutions such as building societies and credit unions. And then there's a federal government, eight state and territory governments, and over, I think it's 500 local governments, which all engage in taxation and spending to various degrees. How do we make sense of all of these different agents interacting with each other? in order to produce a certain amount of output in an economy in a given year at various prices, employing a certain number of people, leaving a certain number of people unemployed. How are we to understand all of this? How are we to conceptualize it? Well, one way in which we can conceptualize it is by starting with a simple principle ignore individuals that is don't worry about how individual households or individual firms behave but rather let's aggregate the behavior of all the households aggregate the behavior of all the firms aggregate the behavior of all of the governments and all of the banks and let's talk in terms of sectors instead. When we do it this way, we can start to get a handle on how an economy as, an, as a whole, the macroeconomy, functions. So let's do that using a very simple model called the circular flow of income and expenditure. So let's divide all of the expenditure on Australian production of goods and services over some period of time, say, for example, a year. We'll divide that expenditure into some major sectors. Let's say we've got total household consumption spending on Australian goods and services. Total business investment expenditure. That means expenditure by businesses on the purchase of new equipment, new buildings, and so on, that enable it to produce more goods in the future. Total government spending on goods and services, and total export spending, that is, expenditure by foreigners on Australian produced goods and services. We add these all together and we've got the total expenditure on Australian production, C plus I plus G plus X. But of course, that can't be the end of the story because not all income generated by the production of goods and services is spent on Australian production. Some of that income leaks out is not spent immediately on Australian goods and services. For example, households will spend some of their income on uh, goods and services, but they'll also save some of it. Furthermore, those households will be taxed before they even get to spend some of their income. So their income will be spent or saved, the income that's spent or saved will be after tax income. 
and then some of their spending is not on Australian goods and services, but rather is on goods and services produced somewhere else, that is, imported goods and services. So we have these leakages or withdrawals, so to speak, that is income that is not spent on Australian goods and services, and that is S plus T plus M, savings plus taxes plus import spending. Now we can visualize these flows of income and expenditure and leakages using our circular flow of income or the longer term, the circular flow of income and expenditure diagram. Let's see how that works. So what we'll start off with is what we're going to call the core of the economy. On the one hand, we've got resource owners, which are households. And on the other hand, we've got business enterprises. The households own the resources, but they don't produce goods and services. The businesses produce goods and services, but they don't own the resources. So we can say that there is a flow from the resource owners, the households, through factor markets to businesses. That is, the businesses will purchase land or hire, purchase, purchase or hire, land, labor and capital from the households. And in exchange, the households will be paid income in the form of rent, wages, interest and profit. Meanwhile, the businesses then use those resources in order to produce goods and services, which they then sell to the households. And in exchange, the households spend their income in consumption, that is, in the purchase of the goods and services produced by the firms. So far, so good. This is the essence of the core of the economy. And we can simplify it down to just look at, we've removed the physical flows, the physical resources moving back and forth and the physical goods moving back and forth, just to look at the expenditure and the income. So we can see on the right hand side, we've got or well, let's start with the left hand side. We've got the left hand side income is paid to the resource owners or the households and the resource owners or households use that to purchase the goods and services produced by the firms, that is consumption expenditure. So in this very, very simple version of the world, C equals Y, consumption spending equals income. But of course, it's more complicated than that because we know that, for example, the households won't just spend all of their income on Australian produced consumer goods. They'll spend some of their income on imported goods. So there will be a flow of some of the income out of the economy altogether, indicated by M import expenditure. On the other hand, we also know that there will be a flow back into the economy in the form of export expenditure. That is, businesses um, in Australia will sell goods and services overseas and that will generate export revenue, which flows back into the Australian economy. So we've added a level of complication, but let's add a bit more. We also know that households save some of their income. And they'll save it predominantly in banks and building societies and credit unions. It's called this the financial enterprises sector. So they will, some of that income will leak out 
and go into the financial enterprises sector. However, we also know that businesses borrow money in order to fund their investment, new investment projects, that is to buy and build new equipment and new factories and new office blocks and so on. So there's expenditure on investment that's flowing from the financial services sector to the business enterprises. But we can add a little bit more complication than that because we also know that before households even see all of their income, some of that income is withdrawn by the state, the governments. We can call this tax. So tax revenue flows out of the income stream before it reaches the households. So they can neither spend it nor save it nor spend it on imports. But the state will also engage in expenditure itself. It will inject government spending back into the flow. And so here we have, although it's a simplification of the overall economy, we can see the flows of income and expenditure, leakages and injections um, that we could say characterize the functioning of a macroeconomy over some period of time. If we conceptualize the economy in this way, then we can say that the economy is in equilibrium. That is, it has no tendency to change from its present state. If the leakages from the flow are matched by, are equal to the injections back into the flow. That is, if savings plus taxes plus imports spending equal investment spending plus government spending plus export revenue, then we can say that leakages equal injections and there's no tendency for our circular flow to grow or shrink. Is it guaranteed, however, that the economy will always be in equilibrium forever and ever? Well, the answer to that is no. If, for some reason or other, withdrawals, be they savings, taxes or imports, increase relative to the injections, that is, investment spending, government spending and exports revenue, then businesses will respond to this overall fall in expenditure by decreasing production, employment and income paid to the resource owners. And on the other hand, if for some reason or other injections increase relative to withdrawals, that is for some reason or other investment spending or government spending or export revenue increase relative to savings or tax revenue or um, import expenditure, then businesses will respond to this increase, this relative increase in spending by increasing production, employment and income paid. That is, the economy or the circular flow will expand. 